I'm Ryan Hall and this is Training Day. You know, when I'm out there running, it's heart, mind, soul, and body, you know? Like, that's what I love about running is it's all of you out there on the road. And, uh, and, and when I'm at my best, I'm accessing all aspects of myself and just pouring it all out there on the course. It's about what's going on in your heart when you're out there. You can win the race and lose in your heart, you know? And I want to bring joy to people's life day in and day out. Use running, something we love, to help other people. If I can help people experience joy in their running and, in li and beyond that, in life in general, then that's what, I, that's what I'm all about. That's what I want to do. Hey, I'm here in Flagstaff, Arizona, where our crew is about to head over to Ryan Hall's house. He's going to do a big pre-Boston Marathon workout this morning. We're going to tag along with him for a 15-mile tempo run on Lake Mary Road. Let's go. If you've never been to Flagstaff, Arizona, picture a sleepy, isolated town reminiscent of something you might find in the wild, wild west. One step above a ghost town, if you will. Located 144 miles north of Phoenix, this quiet mountain town of roughly 130,000 people sits at 7,000 feet above sea level. Its early economy was centered around the lumber, railroad, and ranching industries. And today, Flagstaff remains an important distribution hub for many major corporations. Its open roads, thin air, and endless trails have helped it become the perfect training spot for many top runners in recent years. Our mission at the end of March was to spend a morning with marathoner Ryan Hall see why he's been hiding out in Flagstaff and what he's been doing differently to prepare for his third straight Boston Marathon on April 18th. All right, I'm gonna give Ryan a quick call, let him know that we're on the way. Hey Ryan, we're right around the corner. Yep, see you in a minute. day for work out here. Yeah, it's looking nice. Digging the Red Sox hat too, getting yourself in the spirit. Oh yeah, I always love the Sox. Right on, want to head inside? Yeah, let's uh, get going. A lot has changed since his fourth place finish at last year's race. He split from coach Terrence Mahone and the Mammoth Track Club last fall and left his home base of Mammoth Lakes, California. Since December, Ryan has been a bit of a nomad, and he's been spending his time house-sitting in Flagstaff at the house of famed running coach Jack Daniels. All right, so Ryan, you got a long workout on tap this morning. What are you going to do nutritionally out there? Well, most of my nutrition you know, happens pouring out the meal, you know, the, the pre-pasta uh, dinner. I'm making sure I'm getting in a sufficient amount of carbs, not like carbo-loading necessarily, right. but making sure that I'm getting in plenty of carbs the day before. Um, and then in the morning, just simple shake I like to have because it sits easy on my stomach. Um, so I use like for my breakfast some uh, muscle milk likes. I don't want a ton of fat because that takes longer to digest and can be a little bit harder on your stomach. Right. So I'll have that with uh, so put some uh, some here this in. It's like maltodextrin based carbohydrate. Right. It's really good. Burns a little slower, but also it's easy to digest. So it's like a complex carb that's easy to digest, which is kind of hard to find. Right before I start the workout, I'll have one of these gels, and then uh, then I'll have another gel partway through the run. I'm going 15 mile tempo run, so you don't need a, a ton of gels for that. Right. It's not like a two and a half hour long run or something like that, where maybe I take two or, or even three gels. I'll just take the one gel, and then in between the gel, every 15 minutes or three miles, give or take, I'll be taking in you know, four to eight ounces of, uh, of Cytomax, and for that, like this uh, Side Max Natural. It's like, uh, doesn't have any of that fake sh sugar. It has sweetener in it, but it's stevia, so natural, natural. Sits sweet. pretty easy on your stomach? Yeah, it sits re really well on my stomach. You know, like it, it's a challenge to digest food when you're running that fast. Right. And this is the easiest thing that I've found to, to help me digest food and get in a little bit of energy. Now you told me last night um, you're suffering from a little bit of a probably a gluten intolerance, and that's forced you to change some things right. nutritionally. Um, what's changed in that regard since last year? Well, I'm, always, I'm not eating wheat, right. <laughs> and so, which was a huge staple in my diet. 
So, you know, that was like a bit of an adjustment, but I found that I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I like eat better, I eat more raw, you know, like eat more sweet potatoes and beans and things like that that are great for you, high in antioxidants, high in other vitamins and minerals and stuff that you should be taking in anyways. Whereas before I would, you know, be taking in tons of bread and pasta and stuff like that. So now I have to be really careful. Like when I go to Boston, they're kind enough to hook me up with a room that's gonna have a kitchen. Um, which is huge because even you know in the athletes village will be preparing food but unless you're back there cooking the stuff you don't know what they're throwing soy sauce in or something like that so right and that's the last thing you want to worry about before your biggest right. race of the year right and if you wake up in the morning and your stomach is totally wrecked forget forget about, forget it. about it yeah <laughs> so and that'd be such a silly thing you know here you prepare for like months. four months for a race and then go out and can't race it because you had some soy sauce <laughs> After Ryan finished getting his water bottles ready, he headed into the living room to get his warm-up started with some active stretching exercises. I had a lot of questions for Ryan. One in particular, how is he feeling at this point compared to last year? This was a pretty low-key moment of the morning and gave me a good opportunity to find out. So right now, three weeks out from Boston, how are you feeling this year compared to this point last year? Feeling good, like, I've had some really good workouts out here on Lake Mary Road. It's kind of hard for me to know exactly where I'm at because you know if I would have raced a half marathon a month before Boston last year I don't think it would have been all that special you know like even myself looking back on that training I'm like reading you know 10 days before the Boston Marathon about doing an eight mile tempo run and saying man this feels so hard you know like it shouldn't feel this right. hard to run eight miles at 450 pace it's like right now I could go run eight miles at 450 pace at altitude I mean sea level like that would be fairly easy for me so in some ways I think you know I'm in better shape now than I was before uh, before Boston last year but it's very hard to compare so I just just uh, you know just try not to compare yeah you know, honestly like after New York it was a little bit of a challenge because you never feel as good to to run a subpar race you know and to run four minutes slower than your personal best and to get 20th place or whatever I was, but same time, like I, I know that marathon fitness is so different than right. half marathon fitness. So um, I think it's gonna be a different story come Boston. Now that was only a week ago, a little over a week ago, eight days. Has that fueled your fire a bit heading into Boston three weeks from now? Yeah, so it, it did kind of wake me up and put a little bit of fire in my belly, you know? I'm like, man, I know that I'm in better shape than that, you know? I know that I can run really well at Boston. And uh, in some ways it's good, it takes kind of the pressure off too, you know, it's like having a subpar race going into it fires you up a little bit and then also kind of makes you feel like, I don't know, in some ways you have nothing to lose, you know. Yeah. I know I've put in everything I need to do to get ready for a marathon, so, you know, I'm confident on starting line that I'll be fit and ready to go. After Ryan finished stretching, we jumped in a car with his buddy Billy friend of his from California who was in town visiting for a few days. All right, Ryan, so where are we heading? So we're just uh, driving over to the Urban Trail. It's like a mile from Jack's place. I didn't want to do too much on the road, so I think I'm gonna drive here to warm up and cool down. Right. Yeah, so Sarah's over there running right now, so we might run into her too, so. Right on. And then after you finish the warm up, head back, do some strides, a couple drills, and head out on Lake Mary Road. Yeah. Change the shoes, put the flats on, and yeah, it's go time. I always love putting on flats because uh, it feels like uh, taking the, the weight off the bat, you know, in baseball. So kind of flip a switch for you too, mentally. Just yeah. kind of put you in that mode that you're getting ready to go fast. So I kind of like training with a shoe that has a little more cushion and support and softer, and then put these on. It makes all the difference. The official start right here. Yep, this is our this is our spot. Nothing really to mark it except yellow thing. <laughs> you got salad? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll catch up to you. I just want to start it. Same, same time. time. Yeah. <laughs> With 
Billy in front of him on the bike to break the wind, Ryan set out down the open road, where his plan was to run out and back for 15 miles at marathon effort. With exactly three weeks to go until the Boston Marathon, this was Ryan's longest and most marathon specific workout of the training cycle. I followed alongside in the car from start to finish, and let me tell you, Lake Mary Road is no joke. This course doesn't have any steep climbs, but it's not flat either. It kind of resembles the Boston Marathon course. When I was out there running, I was just trying to, again, put myself in the race, picture myself, all right, this is how it's going to feel in the first five miles of the race, and this is kind of how it's going to feel in the middle of five miles of the race. And so I went a little quicker on the way out, um, used the downhills just like I think is the best way to run the Boston Marathon, like rather than trying to consciously hold yourself back, I just kind of let my legs kind of go. Watching Ryan roll right along, clicking off mile after mile in the low five minute range all by himself was pretty impressive given that he had raced a half marathon just eight days before and was in the middle of a heavy training week, never mind the fact that he was almost 7,000 feet above sea level. He looked focused throughout the workout and his stride was easy and smooth. You gotta trust your instincts and you gotta go when it's right for you and you have to pay attention to your own body. It's really important in the marathon especially because you cross over that line where you're running too hard all of a sudden and the wheels totally come off and pretty soon you're jogging into the finish, you know. And so like you gotta be really smart and use your intuition and be flexible out there. So all of the same, you know, mentality that I always have going in these races where I believe anything's possible. I'm gonna be smart out there and I'm gonna listen to my body and um, you know, if I'm really on, then it'll, it'll, be, uh, it'll be a lot of fun. I watched Ryan race a half marathon last fall in Philadelphia, and he looked ragged and uncomfortable. The guy who was watching roll down the road on this Monday morning in March looked like a completely different runner than the one I had observed from the press truck six months ago. Ryan finished his 15-mile workout a few ticks under 116.45, and he looked tired but far from completely gassed. In fact, he was talking to me in full sentences less than two minutes after he stopped, obviously pleased with his effort. It was just another day of work for one of America's best marathoners. So what was his plan for the following day? Uh, tomorrow, zero. <laughs> no running. No running. Take the day off. Cool. Got to recover, yeah. just as important as these workouts Absolutely. themselves. Right off. Absolutely. All right, man. After heading to the urban trail for his 20 minute cool down, Ryan went back to the house to refuel from his run. What was on the menu? His famous cyto cakes, of course. I'm trying to make sure to get in lots of quality carbs after workout. So I was throwing like half a cup of uh, baking mix. Pancake mix. I got some gluten free stuff here. I throw in a scoop of uh, muscle milk, also at a max recovery. Just vanilla flavor, but any flavor in these pancakes are good. Like I'll do chocolate sometimes. And I throw in some cinnamon, good source of antioxidants. And then just add water, put it on the grill. It's super, super easy, super quick. Cider cakes. <laughs> so everyone in the running world is wondering what is up with Ryan Hall. How is his training going now that he doesn't have a coach? Is he ready to run well at Boston? Are his best days already behind him? After spending almost an entire day with the American record holder in the half marathon, talking to him about his approach to training, and watching him do what he does to get ready for a big race, I can say with confidence that he'll be ready to roll at Boston and beyond.